How do we train an AI chatbot on your company documentation? There's loads of reasons you might want to do this. Maybe you're building a helping AI assistant that's going to go on your website, or maybe you just want to be able to show people how to answer questions based on the knowledge base of your company. This is a really, really straightforward project that uses LLMs, OpenAI and GPT-3 to produce almost human accurate answers based on your business documentation. Skipping ahead, if you want to get to the good bit, you can simply go and fork this REPL on REPLit, add your own training data, add your own main prompt, train it, then prompt it and see how accurate it is at answering your questions. But for those of you that want to get into the nitty gritty, let's go and take a look at the code. For those of you that have seen my video on building an AI chatbot of a person, this is broadly the same code as you've got there with a few tweaks. The first thing that we need to do, of course, is get our OpenAI API key. And this is important because we need to tie it to our accounts and we need to be able to send prompts to GPT-3 and have them returned to us. What we're going to be doing is providing the training data. Go to openai.com, log in, go to your account and get your API key. You can generate a new one if you need to. Put that in the secrets of your REPL and click save. Now let's get on to the code. And the first thing I'm going to do is train my LLM. I'm going to do this on all of my company documentation, or at least as much of it as I can get my hands on. I'm going to create a folder called training and inside a folder called facts. Inside that facts folder, I'm going to fill it with as many text document and markdown documents as I can with my company documentation. Now, of course, if you want to add some code to read PDFs and things like that, because your documentation is in that format, that's perfectly cool, but we're not going to deal with that here. Go and do a quick Google on how to read PDFs from within Python if you need that. Because what we need is all that company documentation as plain text or as close as we can get to that because that's what the LLM is going to use to understand. First thing I'm going to do is use pathlib to tell Python to go through every file in this folder and store it as one big list called data. We'll just run that to check that works and very, very quick because it's text. Now, of course, you might have hundreds and hundreds of documents in here that is important. It's also important to add a few documents about the company itself. It could be a history. It could be the tone of your conversations. If you've got a house style guide, put everything in there. The more information the LLM's got to work with, the more likely it is to be able to answer questions in the style of your company. Of course, PSA, probably not a good idea to put anything top secret in that training data because the LLM will be able to use that to answer questions. Nobody wants a trade secret or a password being leaked out by your helper bot. Now with that done, we're going to need to bring in our character splitter because the way LLMs work, or at least the way OpenAI's GPT-3 works, is that there is a 2000 character limit per chunk. So what we're going to do is set the chunk size to that with the separator as the new line character and run through that entire list again, converting it to a split version called docs. If we run that, we're good to go. And again, this is very, very quick because all we're really doing at the moment is working on text. OK, with that done, let's get on to the actual training. I'm going to bring in two new libraries, one for face. Face, F-I-S-S, -S, is a way of storing really dense data in a vector format so that the LLM can understand it and work with it better. I'm also going to bring in OpenAI embeddings, which will allow us to put our data in a format that OpenAI will understand. And finally, Pickle, which is just a way for us to serialize data in a way that's reasonably easy for Python to deal with. I'm going to start by creating my store, which is my face or my vector based dense data collection of all that information from our docs. And I'm going to use that by passing it the docs and the OpenAI embeddings format. We're then going to write that out to a file because training takes a long time and you want to do as little training as possible one lot of training versus millions and millions of reads of that file to use the training data is much more efficient than training it every single time. So dumping that data out to an index file with vectors and also serializing it and dumping it as a pickle file is important for later on. With that done, we can run it and you'll see that the training now actually takes a while because it is actually producing those training models. Once done, we're going to want to turn that into a subroutine by just 
defining the subroutine and indenting the code because we likely don't want to rerun that training data for a while. Let's build the actual prompt code now. We're going to start by reading our base file and deserializing our pickle file so we've got access to that. And then we're going to open our training master prompt. Now this is really important. Let's take a look at it. This is how we tell our AI how to answer questions. You notice here, I've said that it's a bot based on our company. It needs to answer politely, ask for more data if it needs to, and answer in certain ways. It shouldn't make things up, and it should be able to talk about things in a certain way. This is one of the most important things that you need to do for your business, because this is what gives the bot context for who it's pretending to be. If it's pretending to be a customer service advisor trained on this data, you need to give it that information. If it needs to be friendly and the tone that your company likes to take, do that. If it needs to talk in a technical way or a non-technical way, define that here. Give the prompt as much breadth and detail as you can to give the LLM the understanding of how it should answer for you. And don't forget to do that because this bot will be representing your company. So it needs to have the correct tone, understanding, and you can even say whether it should use curse words or not in the response. We're then going to construct how that prompt's going to work. So when it's sent to OpenAI, what it needs to have is the starting template, which we've just talked about, as well as the history of the conversation. And this is so that the AI can refer back to previously mentioned things. The context that it needs to understand, and that's the training model, everything it needs to know, trained on from your business, we just did a few minutes ago. And finally, the specific question being asked at that time. We're then going to give it the LLM chain. This is what will give it the flexibility to answer. And the key thing here, the temperature. The temperature is also something really worth thinking about. The temperature defines really how much it sort of makes up, how much randomness there is in this. The higher the value between 0 and 1, the more likely it is to hallucinate things and come up with randomness. Similarly, the closer it is to 0, the less it will have the opportunity to make things up and therefore may not be able to answer some questions based on the data you've given it. Now, in this context, if it's representing your business, that number should be as close to 0 as possible. I'm going to set it so it's got a little bit of wiggle room, but do your testing. See what number works for you. Zero might be the right number if you're relying on this bot to represent your company. I'm then going to define a function that will take all that information and send it off to OpenAI and return the answer. And that's very, very simple. What I'm going to do is create a similarity search from all that data set we've trained it on. I'm going to create a context from that, which is just a text variable that I'm going to pass on to the LLM, giving it all that training data. And then we are going to use predict, which is what gets the answer back from the LLM. I'm going to send it the question it's been asked. I'm going to send it the full context, all that training data, and I'm going to send it the history that we need to understand the context of the conversation. Well, they're going to end with a simple loop, which is going to store a history list. It's going to send the question to the LLM, get the response back, and then archive the history before going back into a loop. And let's try this out. Let's ask a simple question like, where is your company based? And we get a reasonable response. What do I do if this isn't working? And a good response there with very little made up and all using the docs we've got. Who do I contact for a problem for this? We've built a working conversational support assistant here very, very cheaply and very, very efficiently. Now, you may be thinking, I can't really send a link to a command line program to my users. Well, let's turn this into an API that you can plug into other things. I'm going to refactor this code a little bit and I'm going to move the training code into a separate Python file. I'm going to leave the prompt code in this main file and edit it up a little bit. I'm going to add in the Flask library and I'm going to move things around so that most of the program remains the same, but actually it's looking for certain accesses and certain pages. If we go to the website address of this REPL slash data and we give it some JSON information, particularly an API key, something that we use to identify us so we can't let anybody else use it, we'll also have the history and the question being sent back and forth. And what I'm going to do is in that case, if I got all that information, I'm going to send back a JSON string with everything we need. 
Now, of course, we need to deal with error cases. The first error case is if there's any problem at all in that code, well, I'm going to nope out of there and just send them an error message. Of course, you can send them the actual error message if you like, but I'm going for security through obscurity here. And if they don't have the right authorization, they don't have the right API key, we'll also nope them out of there as well with an error message. And there we go. We can use curl to send information back and forth there, and we can use requests in a Python library to talk to that API and get information back. Why is that useful? Well, we can now build our interface separately, pipe that information into a separate service, or even plug it into a chatbot that already exists on our website. Another PSA, you may want to set up usage limits for this because it can get quite expensive quite quickly if people are experimenting with your AI chatbot. If you followed along and you just want working code, please feel free to go fork my REPL at the links below. You'll find that all you need to do is add your training data, change your prompt, and you'll be able to build everything by clicking the run button.